Hawaii. <laughs> we are live. Okay. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the um, Changer webinar with um, Mitt Ost for the Advocate Europe competition. Um, we'll get started right away. Um, in, on today's webinar, we're going to tell you a little bit about the competition and give you the opportunity to ask your questions. So if you're thinking about submitting a project, then this is the time to find out um, all of the secrets for how you can you have a better chance of winning. Um, so today we're joined by two of the team members at Metos, um, and Corina. I don't think you can see them yet, but you will in a second. And um, Metos is a Berlin organization, Berlin-based organization which promotes um, a strong network within Europe, and particularly in Eastern Europe, and um, aims to strengthen the civil society in Europe. And this is one of their projects. So. Advocate Europe is a competition designed to strengthen civil society and relationships within Europe. Um, and they award, um, have I got this right, up to 12 projects? Up to, yeah. Yeah, yeah with um, up to 50,000 euros. Um, and um, the competition is running right now, so if you go onto the website, you'll see um, that some uh, projects have already been entered, but there's still a chance to apply right up until the 8th of March. Right. So um, the competition is being run in um, partnership with the Mercado Stiftung and Liquid Democracy. And we at the Changer um, Community for Social Impact Professionals are supporting um, and promoting the competition as well. So without much further ado, I'm going to pass on to Corinna and Christina, who are going to tell you a little bit more about the competition. Um, but even while they're speaking, you can use the question and answer app to submit your questions. So just um, write them uh, right there on the screen and we should be able to answer them. If it doesn't work, then you can either do it on the event page for the Google Hangout or on the Facebook group which we created. Um, and we'll have a look there as well so that hopefully we'll be able to answer your questions. Okay. So, okay, tell us more. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hello, so welcome to the second uh, Google Hangout. And uh, I'm Christina. And I'm Corinna. And we are from the Advocate Europe uh, team. And in a second, we will answer um, your question. We were first uh, would like to show you our website, the online platform where you can submit your proposals and just briefly, shortly show you um, how the whole process is working. And after that, we will ask, uh, answer your questions. So I will uh, quickly show you how everything works. Uh, as you can see on the screen, we are on the advocateeurope.eu uh, web, web page. And uh, you can join us on the idea space with your idea. You can submit your idea here. But not only those who with an idea can um, join us, also those who want to support um, uh, several projects can uh, register and vote and at the same time you can also uh, comment and give feedback it's um i'm sure i will show you right away here we have a project here you can support you can comment here if you want and um yeah afterwards the uh, the deadline for the submission is the 8th of march afterwards we will um, shortlist the best um, 50 ideas and they will be sent directly to the uh, expert jury who will um, choose the, will decide about the winners. And um, this will happen in May. And afterwards, um, the, the winning uh, teams will be supported and mentored um, uh, by us and the whole network. Yes, that would be in a nutshell. Here you go. Okay, and let me um, shortly uh, describe you what we are looking for. As um, as you know, we are a European idea challenge, and um, this not just mean that we are looking for projects from all over Europe, but also that we want to strengthen, or mostly that we want to strengthen connection to Eastern Europe, and that is why. Um, we are looking for people who are really committed and want um, to connect 
uh, Europe um, through their project and to want to um, really strengthen the European um, civil society because we are strongly believing in a unified Europe and we are, um, if you just look in the media and the news today, you see Europe is at the crossroads and what we need um, are new approaches and new ideas, really unconventional um, approaches to solve the um, current issues in Europe today. So we have um, three selection criteria and we can find them easily on our website. And this is strange in connection cohesion in Europe is an innovative approach, a new method, or, and um, your project idea has to be connected to daily life. This is just in general, there's um, more to be said to this, um, to this uh, issue, but um, first of all, um, yeah, this is in general what we are looking for. And now we can start with answering your questions. Okay, great, thank you very much. So um, just a reminder to everybody who's watching, you can submit your questions either through the question and answer app on the webinar itself or on the Google Hangout page or on the Facebook page for the event. Um, I think I just sent the link to that so you should be able to see that. Um, we have got a few questions in already, so we'll kick off with those ones. Um, the first question from Zimon. Um, he's asking if he already needs to have a running project or whether he can also submit a business plan for a project which hasn't yet started. Okay, yeah, um, so both is possible. So if you, uh, if you are already running a project, um, uh, of course it's fine for us and uh, maybe you want to, um, want to apply with uh, something new which you want to add to this project. And what um, Simon is asking is, like, um, uh, can I really start with this project? And um, here the answer is absolutely yes, because we're also looking for really fresh initiatives who um, aren't maybe not registered yet, who haven't run a project before, but who want to do something because they think, okay, now Europe needs this project to really um, strengthen the connection um, and to do something about this. And uh, so that's why um, you can also apply, of course you can apply with a very new, very fresh and not running um, project yet. Okay, I'm sure he'll be very pleased about that. Great, we've got another question in. Um, Dimitra is asking, do we need to have partners from another country or can we work on a regional level too? Um, yes, you can have partners from another country. It's not a must. It depends very much on your uh, project. Um, I think if we would, yeah, if we would know more about it, it, it's important to know the topic, to know what what's your idea. But if you, yeah, I think the answer, yeah, you can have uh, foreign partners from Europe. Yeah, yeah from Europe, and um, I think also we had a project that has a partner in the U.S. And this is also fine if it makes sense that you have this this partner. Um, and he had like four different partners, and one was from the US. But the applying um, country or the the country from which you are applying should be a European, which is not meant like an EU country, but from the wider Europe. You can find all um, the eligible countries on our website. But if the if the partner is uh, from the outside of Europe, it should make sense. Um, to your project, why you have yeah. chosen this partner, you should maybe explain. But um, of course, you can like uh, have different partners, and this is also, of course, um, very important for us if you have different partners. It's but not, yeah. Um, maybe it's also the, this confusion with, uh, for instance, European um, uh, programs like Erasmus Plus, where you, it's a must to have a, a, a foreign partner. In our case. Again, it depends very much on your idea. You can also not have a partner in another country. Yeah. Yeah. Um, last time, I think you gave a really good example of a kind of project which could work without partners, where you'd still be strengthening Europe, right? With kind of like local integration, European integration projects. Um, yeah, European integration projects. Uh, which one was that? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know whether you gave a specific example, but just for people to understand, because I think sometimes maybe it's hard to understand how you can do like a European project without other partners. Ah, okay, right. So this is um, 
if you uh, if you not have like with your project connected really like cooperation partners, but if you want to have if you have an idea like uh, we have this um, this initiative refugees welcome, mm -hmm. um, who have an online platform who are connecting refugees to um, to local um, shared space. Um, so they had the idea to say, okay, we have this idea and we want to bring it to other European countries. So they started with Germany and Austria and now they are more than eight different European countries. And um, so they have not really a cooperation partner which um, with they applied, but um, they build now really strong networks in um, different European countries, bring the idea to this and work with them, of course, very close together, but they are not um, like in the like a project partner. So this was the idea. This transfer this idea to other European countries so that they can also use it, use the knowledge, of course, use the experiences, use the methods, and um, to share the this website. the website to share this idea. So we had this, and we also had one that was, um, but it was that is dealing with um, youth unemployment in um, Europe, and they are also building a network and. Um, sharing their method with other European partners. And this is also possible, of course. They apply it on their own, but in the project, they are really diverse working with other partners. Okay, that's great. I think um, Dimitri just also responded and said that um, they're actually also working with asylum seekers. Uh, they're based in Sweden, um, and they wanted to kind of work on a regional level first and then grow beyond that. So maybe that's a comparable... Uh, example for that kind of thing as well. Um, okay, we just had another question in, and the question is: Why representatives? Um, why do representatives from Advocate Europe only comment on some projects on the site? Um, does this have a further meaning? Uh, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, uh, we talk now about some projects we funded last year to give you an example of um, what is uh, what is what is our or to show you what happened and who won and why they did one and of course if you apply and if you submit the proposal we will read it carefully and, uh, and and you have a chance to win if you are fulfilling our selection and eligible criteria we just are like telling you about other projects, about the project who won last year to show you some examples. But yes, maybe I um, I can add something. Yeah. What um, the question maybe refers to more exactly is um, why some projects right now on this round are commented and the other not. And um, it's, it depends very much. I mean, we have, for instance, uh, two, um, persons who are really taking care of each project, but that, I don't know, if they are inspired to ask a question, they ask, it's not that they must do to, to comment all the, the projects. Uh, you can also ask for feedback for, from them or from the other person. It doesn't mean anything when, um, let's say, a project has 20 comments and the others have none. It's just a matter of, inspiration I think. Yeah, so what we're talking about, I can show you on the um, screen also uh, one more time, is this uh, that you, that we have the idea space and um, here we have the, you, have the, you all have the possibility to comment and uh, this one has got 16 comments now and that we have two um, girls, Anya and Alex, who are commenting on the platform. So, um, and actively commenting on it, but they are not commenting every project. It's not possible because also of the amount of the um, proposals, but so let's go back to this. Um, but maybe they don't have a question or they don't think that, okay, um, it's okay. I, I understand everything what you have um, submitted and I, I don't have to ask more for more because everything is clear to me. So um, most of the questions are like, okay, tell me more about this or um, have you thought about that and what do you mean with that? And so maybe your proposal is not perfect, <laughs> of course, <laughs> but uh, maybe it's clear to them and they know what um, is meant. But this really is just like a feedback to the proposals and to um, not to um, in any kind to evaluate them or to, to charge them or whatever. So it doesn't mean that. It's just because of the dialogue, to get in the dialogue now and to ask these questions now. 
so that we know also more about the proposals um, until we will read them. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you for clearing that up. Um, so uh, we've had another question in. Um, should the project share common ideas and application methods throughout Europe, or can it be customized for each European country according to each country's social parameters while still achieving social cohesion? Um, ooh, this is really depending on your project, I think. Uh, and of course, every country is unique, and you have to um, to to use a, a special a method, maybe, or a special approach. But um, this, I would like to really talk about to to know more about the project, because I wouldn't say no in this case. If you are achieving social cohesion, um, you will have like a, um, a method to do this, and and um, and you will have or you have uh, maybe also a vision. Um, why you are doing or you are convinced about uh, why you are doing it like that. So, um, yeah, I, should, I, I, I should, must know more about, I have to know more about the, the, the project itself. Okay, so Panagiotis, if you want to um, tell us a little bit more, then you can, or else you can contact Christina after the webinar and perhaps um, talk her about it a little bit more then. Um, okay, we've got another couple of questions that we've had in previously. So, um, what, the first question there would be, um, what happens if your project is, is already partly funded by other programs? Is this going to be a problem or how does that work? Okay, it's not a problem, absolutely not, because um, we have um, a lot of uh, proposals now who have other funders. Um, like Erasmus Plus or um, any any other funder, and um, we really um, it, it's not a must to have another funder, but of course your project is more sustainable if you have different funders. So also we are very interested in that if you have different uh, uh, funders because this means okay um, you're connected and you you have um, yeah different uh, other possibilities and so this means you are eligible of course. No problem. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. Um, okay, I've just had another question in. Um, what is the difference between advocacy work and activist work in your case? So I guess the question is, do you also support activist work? Activist work? Yes, I would say yes. <laughs> um, what, what, what do they mean by that exactly? So uh, activists, of course, I think we, yes, um, it depends again very much on the idea, but uh, advocacy and activism, we very much encourage, you know, an active civil society activist throughout Europe. So it depends very much on the, on the idea. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and don't understand like advocacy, like in uh, uh, something political or lobbying so, or, or lobbying or something like that so the word is a word but um, it's more like okay I'm I'm a pro-european um, active citizen and um, I um, what I'm doing is um, this style or this style if I'm doing it like about um, like poli on the policy level or if I'm doing it on the grassroots level and really active active in the streets of course you're very interested in any kind that is um, any kind of project that is um, uh, that is strengthening in Europe, and no matter on, on uh, which level you are doing this, and when, of course, activists, yeah, can supply. <laughs> I'm sure um, Pot Twenty One, who were one of the winners last year, will probably consider themselves to be activists. Um, yeah, and uh, they obviously did a really successful project. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, if you have like another question. Um, Following up on that, feel free to uh, answer that uh, answer as well. Um, okay, moving on to the questions from beforehand. Um, can people submit more than one application for different projects, or would you recommend against that? I didn't. Did you answer? No, I didn't understand you. Could you uh, repeat the question? Sorry. Um, oh. Can people submit more than one project idea? Um, or would you recommend against doing that? 
Okay, yes, of course they can. You can submit as many proposals as you like, actually. <laughs> uh, so technically, see, you shouldn't maybe apply more than two. Um, but I also had this question before and they asked, okay, I submitted an own project, but I'm also a cooperation partner of a second project. So is this possible? And I, of course it is. And um, if it makes sense to you that you are applying for so many uh, proposals, technically it is possible. And of course, it is also um, fine for us. Okay, great. We've had another question here. Um, can a commercial company or organization be a partner of the project? Um, so if, for example, one of these partners is an NGO, is it possible for another partner to be a commercial organization? Okay. Um, this is also a very uh, special question. Of course, the one that is applying should be an NGO because we can give the funds only to non-profit organizations. Um, and the project itself also has to be a non-profit. This, um, this is a must. So if you have a partner organization um, that is a business partner and is commercial, Explain it to us. Why do you have chosen this partner and why does it make sense that you work together with this partner in your project? And um, maybe also for, um, for using the funds. You can use the funds and um, I'm not quite sure what it means if, you, if you're sharing maybe the funds with a commercial partner. We can't give any money to this commercial partner, but um, Try to explain really to us why you have chosen this partner, why it is important and why it is um, they have the competence um, you need and uh, why you want to work with them, why it is strengthening your project or why it is, yeah, that makes sense. And then we can talk about this, but of course you have to be, you have to apply as an NGO. Okay, great. But just on that note, um, another question that came up was, do you have to already be registered as an NGO before you apply? Um, maybe you could just say something about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you don't need to be registered at, as a non-profit organization in the moment you submit your um, uh, proposal. Um, this can happen um, during the, the um, um, how do you say the bedding side? Uh, the application. application time, sorry. And uh, also once you, um, let's say you are a winner and uh, you're still not registered, there is uh, still time to register as a um, non-profit organization. It's also a relationship based on trust that you, we give you money in order uh, um, so you can, you know, register your uh, organization. So um, this is very um, um, individual from uh, proposal to proposal. But yes, at this moment, we can accept uh, proposals which are um, submitted by individuals and not in informal groups. And uh, last year we had this, so the two um, projects won and they weren't re registered yet. And so after they got the money, so they knew, okay, I can really start this project, they registered as an association. And this is also very important for us that we really also find um, people who are saying, okay, I really want to do something, I'm really committed to this project and I'm really believing in this and, um, and uh, to, to, to find also these ideas, to not say from the start, okay, no, you're not, um, you're not uh, eligible to apply, but we won't really want to find these people. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, another question that we've had uh, before is um, the kind of length of time for these projects. So what happens if my project is anticipated to be a lot longer than um, a few months or a year? Mm -hmm. Um, so this is a time frame. We wrote a time frame uh, on the on the, on our website, and uh, you can spend. And this is um, really um, connected to the money. You can spend the funding money in case you win um, from uh, July 2016 until March 2017. This is a short period, and this is because of um, our own uh, limitations of this project. But of course, your project can start earlier and can also and lasts longer than March uh, 2017 because um, you or you can just spend the money in this time frame. So um, we, yeah, this is <laughs> maybe this is all to say. 
course. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, okay, we've got another question just come in. Um, Simon, Simon is asking, um, if he requests um, 50,000 for his project, and you do like the project, but you don't think it deserves 50,000, would you still support it, but for example, give him less money to run the project? Yes, uh, we will tell you <laughs> that, that, uh, that we think um, you should better explain why it deserves 50,000. So this is what we did last year also. We got all these proposals and they asked for um, an amount of money. And um, we all, um, when, they, when it was decided, we all called them and also told them about, okay, uh, let's, um, let's, let's make a financial plan. We'll ask all um, proposals that make it to the second round, to the shortlist for a financial plan so that they can explain why they are using um, this money in this way. And if we don't see that it makes sense, um, but still like this idea, we will also ask, we may ask you for reducing this amount, we will give you um, less money, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about, it's a matter of negotiation by the end of the day. So um, it's important maybe to mention that um, the shortlisted projects will be then, uh, we will get a, a closer look to the, the um, financial plan and then we will start um, negotiate, let's say, or um, ask more questions and so on. Yeah. But of course, we still support the idea. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure that's good to know. Um, so let's go to one of the questions that we've had in before. Um, once the project has been submitted, can they make further changes? Yes, um, once it is sub submitted on our uh, platform, definitely you can um, edit it. You can, in, within these six weeks, now there are uh, two weeks le uh, left, you can ask for feedback and you can readjust it, add and, uh, you know, make your proposal shine for, um, for the deadline. And uh, yeah, there is no limitation in, in this. Um, in this sense, it's um, in our opinion quite unique and also quite transparent, um, and that's why it's important for us um, to do that until the deadline and also to comment till then. And then it will, it will be um, a week afterwards where the supporters of your um, idea can vote your idea, and the, the best, the most votes will, the project with the most votes will be awarded with the community award. So this is also important to make some um, advertisement for your idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. And while we're talking about the community award, is that something that you have to take part in if you enter the award or can you kind of opt out of that onto the competition? Well, um, for us, like it's like an extra, um, a word, let's put it this way, because we put lots of emphasis on, on the community online. We we like to activate people to comment and to give feedback and to like and to vote and to support the, 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 the project. That's why um, I think the first three uh, projects with the most votes, they will be automatically um, regarded as, as the winners. Yeah, and it's just an um, extra. So we have the jury decision, and the jury will decide about the 12 projects who will win up to 50,000 euro. And the community award is to say, okay, not let's not just decide by experts who are the really um, the good ideas in Europe, but also let's decide the crowd. So that's why we have these three community awards, and the um, first place will get 55,000, um, not 50,000 euros. So, so this is like an extra award so that the decision is not only made by um, experts but also by you, the people out there. But you don't have to take part, um, it's just extra, I want to show, I want to maybe motivate my network to show them and to, um, to, to get support for this. And also to add this, um, we will have three ideas um, in the end who have the first three places, but of course, you also have to be eligible because this is also 
um, money, funding money um, or funds we get. So you have to be eligible. If you're not, if you are a non-profit or and you are in the first place, we can't give you the money, of course, because we have to fulfill also, um, some yeah, some criteria and um, yeah, just to just to tell you that, but this is really in detail now. <laughs> Okay, cool. So just um, to everybody uh, watching, just in case anybody's joined us, um, you can submit questions through the question and answer app on the webinar and on the Google Hangout page as well or on the Facebook page for the event um, if you prefer. Um, we will carry on going um, for the next few minutes um, for sure. So and if lots of questions come in, then uh, even longer. But um, get your questions in if you're burning to ask anything. Um, we've got another question um, which came in beforehand. So um, what about big uh, nonprofits, which are obviously already funded and maybe not considered to be the most innovative organizations? Do you still um, fund projects by them as well? Of course. So if you are already um, an uh, organization which is um, working since, uh, let's say, 10 years, but you have a really um, innovative project now, uh, we're very interested uh, also in that. Yeah, it's all about the, the idea yeah. at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and the final question would be in terms of what you fund. Um, so can you fund kind of building work and construction um, or um, are there other restrictions in terms of what you get money for? Mm -hmm. We have some restrictions as um, we told you and this is also to be found on our website. You can find what we not we are not funding and um, this year we are um, getting this, um, we hearing this question very often, can I use the money for construction? And um, in the first place, the answer is no. But um, of course, it's always like uh, it really depends on your project because we can't um, give you the money if you want to renovate a cafe, let's say. And that's that is all, so that you can use afterwards a cafe for a social um, a social business business or whatever. This is not possible because then it's the project itself is a construction. But to, um, to uh, let's explain this on a um, project we funded last year. This is called Refugees for Co-Creative Cities. And what they did is that they are um, renovating old buildings in an um, area which is really struggling with infrastructure. Um, they are um, renovating these buildings together with refugees. So the, uh, the main aim is not just the construction. But they um, they they are aiming for integration, better integration of refugees, and for um, uh, shaping um, this area which is really struggling with infrastructure. So which is infrastructural problems. So you have two main goals, so that they uh, could use the money also for the construction. But it was directly linked to a project that uh, aimed for something bigger, let's say. And, and now, me just to make sure that you also saw the the last uh, question here that came in uh, from Marina, if I wrote correctly the Cyrillic words, uh, letters, uh, with the in some project on advocate Europe expenses, increase salary of the team of the project. Can the salary of the team be funded within the grant from advocate Europe? Mm -hmm. You want? Okay. Uh, of course, it can. So the answer is here also yes. Um, you can split uh, the money um, for material costs and for personal costs um, because we also think that um, if your project is um, a great uh, good but there has to there have to be people who are also doing it and um, that's why we are also uh, you can also use the money for personal costs um, of course it has to be balanced so make sure that it's not a huge amount that you use for um, for your salary, let's say, but uh, that it's like one third or two thirds, so that the most of the money is really used um, for your project and for um, implementing your project or running your project. Okay, great. Thank you. I haven't seen that question. Um, <laughs> okay. Would you, does anybody else have any questions which they want to add? And Christina and um, Karina, do you have any 
anything that you feel like you'd still like to mention before we wrap up? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more, anything to add. But it's quite, of course, uh, there's a possibility always to um, write an email at uh, help at advocate-europe.eu or you can, can contact us via the website, um, Facebook. Uh, on Facebook. We have a Skype account. We are called Advocate Europe Team. So find us and then we can have a Skype call if you really have a individual questions. Most of the people have um, a very um, individual question regarding their project. So does it fit to the criteria? I want to do that or this. And um, they are unsure. So of course we are there. You can also call us, of course. Um, yeah, there are uh, different um, possibilities and then you can also spread the call um, among your network and um, yeah we are happy if you share the call to the others cool it certainly sounds like a great opportunity I think the message is just give it a go it's definitely worth a share um, <laughs> there has actually just been one question that's just come in now um, and that is is there an adequate or ideal balance sheet the balance sheet yeah, I'm guessing like the financial plan. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is actually we prepare that we're yeah. sharing it. <laughs> yeah, we have it um, on our website. We have a template of a financial plan. We can uh, share it with you. Yeah, right. So <laughs> there you go. So here it is. You can find it on our website. I show you uh, where you can find it. Just a second. So, um, I am just join, and then we have the FAQs down here, and we have the question: Will the jury ask us for further materials um, before making a decision? And the answer here is yes. So, um, if you are um, shortlisted, we will ask you, as I said before, um, for a financial plan, which is this one here. We already opened it, and here you can um, like play around. Um, uh, at your um, costs and to see also, okay, um, I have another sponsor or not. Um, I'm, this is a funding I request from Advocate Europe. And this is um, something we don't need now. This is um, something uh, we will ask you for if you make it to the second round. So from the 50 shortlisted project, but of course use this template. Um, it's really helpful to calculate um, your 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 money and to see um, in detail what you will need. Excellent. Um, that was a very good question um, and a very good answer. So um, thank you. I hope that was what you are after. Um, anybody have any last minute questions? <laughs> I just I just discovered another uh, question here from Marina. Um, yeah. Can the project which wins the community award win the main grant? I ask because in 2015 the project which won the community award did not obtain the main grant. This is true that um, like in 2015 it was another project or another project and um, he didn't won the um, community award. Um, but uh, of course it is possible. Why not? It, it just was the first time he did it last year and um, and uh, the um, the three um, proposals who are on the three first places regarding the community award will be shortlisted and um, the jury will uh, decide on that. But of course they will also look at the selection criteria and um, to compare it to all the other proposals and to see, okay, is it strong enough to also get the grant, to get the funding of 50,000 euro. And, um, Last year it wasn't the case, but of course it is possible. <laughs> Good. Right, um, so I'm just checking all of our different channels. Just make sure <laughs> I'm anything. Um, I can't see anything there. Can you see anything? I don't know if you're very good at spotting <laughs> Yeah, good for me, good to hear. I don't have any further questions. Right. Well, as, as already been mentioned, obviously it's not the last chance to um, have lots of opportunities to ask the team directly, either through the platform or through Skype or email or um, whatever, something else just 
thank you. Um, so, um, yeah, feel free to be in touch directly with the team or with Changer, and we can definitely put this on. Um, and otherwise, I wish everybody lots and lots of luck. I'll be looking forward to uh, following the community voting and then finding out the winners in the summer. Okay. Yeah, right. And thanks for asking all these questions. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to the proposals. Exactly. And thank you, the changer, and Naomi, for yeah. the wonderful moderation. <laughs> thanks a lot. Okay. Have a good afternoon. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye bye.